Hello and welcome to this film which is all about atomic absorption spectroscopy and hopefully by the end of it you'll understand what this technique is all about and how we can use an atomic absorption spectrometer in conjunction with something called a calibration curve to actually start measuring the amounts of elements uh, in general but in particular certain metals in a sample. So let's just remind ourselves of something that hopefully you remember covering in the previous couple of films, and that is the fact that spectral lines, whether they be in an absorption spectrum or in an emission spectrum, are caused by electrons moving between low and high energy states. Okay, And if the electrons are being promoted into high energy orbitals and absorbing light in the process, then we'll get one of these line spectra, an absorption one, with a light background and some dark lines missing, corresponding to the energy jumps that they made. And that would just be the like a negative photograph of an emission spectrum for that same element, where there'd be a dark background and electrons that were kind of making the reverse journey, if you like, um, would be emitting light of those exact same colours. And you might also remember, hopefully you do, that each individual element in the periodic table has an absorption spectrum that is peculiar to it okay and that is because of the fact that each individual element has its electrons configured in a completely well, not a completely different way but in a in a way that is unique to that element okay so if the electrons are arranged in a certain way then the kinds of transitions they can make and therefore the energy of light that they'll absorb as they get promoted into other energy shells will be unique to that particular element. Okay, now, obviously Australia has very, very many things to feel particularly proud about, okay? But perhaps one of the things it should feel most proud about is the fact that a team of Australian scientists actually invented this technique um, called absorption, atomic absorption spectroscopy, or AAS for short, and um, we won't worry too much about the fact that this was a team of scientists led by an English physicist, but they were working at the CSIRO in Melbourne, and they came up with this technique, which is important because it allows us to detect the presence of metals like lead or other heavy metals that can be quite poisonous, but can also be found in water supplies and things like that. They can actually detect them in very low levels and measure their concentrations down to parts per billion, which really is extremely low. And we couldn't do this until we had this technique. So let's have a look at how it works. Okay, basically what um, an absor atomic absorption spectrometer does is it creates an atomic absorption spectrum. Okay, and just like anything else, it shines a light through a sample. Okay, and this sample will absorb some of the light, as we've seen, it will create spectral lines. Okay, and um, the light then gets shone through this, what's called a monochromator, and this basically uses these mirrors or prisms to, to split the light into particular frequencies. So we can observe each individual frequency at a time in our machine, and using this light-sensitive detector, we can, de we can see how intense the light that's coming through is. So to cut a long story short, what we're doing here is we're seeing if the light that is being emitted by a sample matches an element that we know of, and then we can use the intensity of that light to get a handle on how much of that element there might be in there. Now, um, because this is often an unknown sample that we're dealing with, what we do is we use a, something called a calibration curve where we say to ourselves, right, okay, well, let's set, let's create a few different samples of known concentration, okay? So we might have a solution that contains lead or a, another heavy metal like cadmium, which we don't want in our food or our water supply, and we can maybe create a solution with a concentration of five micromolar, say, so five uh, one millionths of a mole per litre, okay? And we can plot what absorbance we get, so in other words, how much of the light gets absorbed by this sample um, at a particular frequency using our machine. We can do that for a number of different concentrations, and we can plot a curve through our points, okay? Now, this might look like a straight line, and Yes, you could say that this is quite a straight looking curve, but once you've got your curve or line or what have you, then you can now go to your machine, put your 
unknown sample in, so maybe your tap water from a region that you're interested in analysing, and you could say to yourself, right, okay, well, the absorbance was maybe 1.8. And then you can read off your graph what concentration you must have had. Okay, so that might fall between points that you actually got, but you're using this to actually measure the concentration of something because your atomic absorption spectrometer, although it's an extremely fancy bit of equipment, will not directly measure a concentration, it will measure how much light is being absorbed. So you have to translate that into a concentration and that's what we use a calibration curve for. Okay, so hopefully um, but if the Australians amongst you are now feeling a, a real upwelling of uh, pride in your country and you hopefully all of you whether you're Australian or not know how we can use a calibration curve um, and our atomic absorption spectrometer to measure metals and they don't have to be heavy metals but any element um, down to extremely low concentrations. so hopefully it will make sense um, if you do have any questions or comments then as usual please feel free to come and see me sooner the better so that you can solve your problems or post a comment on YouTube